Okay, now pick one of those. Is that your card? Incredible. Not at all, counselor. You surreptitiously placed the edge of your left thumb against the card. When you divided the deck to reshuffle, you kept that card on top. You thus were able to have me either save or discard, depending upon the location of the card, which you followed at each step, until we were left with just one, the card I originally chose. Welcome back to Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. Yo. Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds, and Dory is a Star Trek novice, and we are taking her on our first journey through Star Trek The Next Generation. Today we'll be discussing the Season 4 episode, Legacy, original air date October 27th, 1990. And as always, we'll take it to Dory for the recap. Okay, so uh, we start with Riker, Data, Worf, and Troy playing poker. And Troy's like, "Uh, you two have successfully divided the evening between you. And then Worf says, I suspect conspiracy, but far be it from me to accuse my superior officers. And they're like, lol. Um, So then like Riker does like a card trick thing and Data picks like the Jack of Hearts. Riker's like, find the card, Data, split the deck, blah, blah, blah. And then when he has, like, 11 cards, Stryker's like, uh, throw five cards away, and Data literally just, like, throw cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, like, throws them behind his back. <laughs> then Data ends up with, like, the card in his hand, and Troy's like, whoa! And Data then just, like, fucking ruins it and explains how Riker did it. Yeah. So it's like, thanks, Data, I guess. <laughs> but see, you see, the entire scene is foreshadowing for Data getting bluffed later in the episode. Whoa. Whoa. It's supposed to be like, ah, he can <laughs> see through your tricks. That's right. But but can he? <laughs> so then they are interrupted because uh, Enterprise has received a distress call. Um, so they're changing courses. It, they... Uh, Picard's got to be bummed by this. They bypassed a scheduled archaeological survey of, what did I write? Camus 2 for, yeah, the, uh, for the distress call. Mm-hmm. And we know Picard loves his archaeology. He so. does. Sorry, guy. Rip. Maybe next time. Yeah, rip. So there's a Federation freighter called Arcos, which is like having an emergency around... Turkana 4, which is Yar's birth planet. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's like shit happening. Then like Tan Tzu, who is like an engineer, he's like, yeah, um, warp drive containment breach. Um, there be explosions. Hurry real fast. And then Picard's like, okay, we better bust ass. But then he says Ensign and moves forward to reveal that Ensign is not Wesley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was a shocker to me. <laughs> It's like, there's another ensign on this bridge that's not Wesley Crusher? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I know. But, like, in that spot? Well, there is no Wesley Crusher in this episode, so. Yeah. I know. Wes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're like, O'Brien, lock on to the crew. But then too late, the explosion happens. But wait, there's, like, a signal because an escape pod thing is, like, launched just in time. And the trail is heading into the colony but the colony is a fucking nightmare of a place apparently and they were people like the colony has warned other ships in the past to be like you come down here we're fucking killing you so don't try it um apparently like their government fell apart and it is just a absolute shit show and they left the colony 15 years ago so Picard is like, um, on one hand, uh, it sounds fucking stupid to let people go down there. But on the other hand, we need to rescue our crew people. So looks like stupid decision has won. <laughs> so what else is new? Yeah. So the colonists, they live in like structures underground. And he wait. OK, now I'm confused because then he's like, O'Brien's like, oh, yeah, we like can see the pod 300 meters beyond the colony's perimeter and then Worf's like yeah this could be like violent and shit so maybe like Dr. C should like 
wait here until we need her. And Dr. C is like, no, I can handle myself, Worf. I can do it. But I also was like, I don't know. Worf kind of has a point. They're not saying she shouldn't come at all. They're just like, we'll just call you when you we need her. In retrospect, I think the scene is a little sexist. I don't know if they were trying to be a little sexist with it or like if that was just their I, I their think that's where the they time. were going with it. But it, but we know that. But like it didn't to me, I didn't get like I, it didn't feel like Worf was trying to be sexist. It just felt like. Oh, no, no. It, I don't. It's a dangerous. I don't mean it felt like Worf was trying to be sexist. I mean, that's kind of what the writers ended up doing inadvertently. Oh, well, oh. well, I, I think that it was supposed to be a thing of like, like, oh, just because I'm I'm a woman doesn't mean like I'm going like. Yeah. Like, I, th- like, I think they were going for like Worf being like, oh, woman shouldn't come. But, but that didn't. It's not what I came across. It just yeah. was like they're. It's fucking dangerous. They have. And the, she's not like, a soldier. Worf, <laughs> yeah, Worf, Data, and Riker have more experience. To be of, fair, like, you were talking about somebody who last episode saved herself from a parallel universe that was collapsing, and just yeah. a few episodes ago, she was shooting Borg alongside Worf. Yeah. Uh, that's true, but I don't know this. The way that they set it up, or like the way they explained, it, is like they were going to be like killed on sight, basically. Yeah, that's fair. That was sort of my impression for this. Whereas the Borg, they weren't like killing on sight. The Borg was, I think, a little bit easier to like individually shoot, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I and suppose. so like I get Worf's concern. So yeah, I don't necessarily like. Yeah. disagree i just like the, he wasn't saying oh no she should like not come just saying like when we need it like when we need the doctor let's bring her down right yeah, we'll summon you and i don't yeah like that doesn't feel like <laughs> it's like i don't know i didn't think it as much of a thing anyways um because like i know dr c can handle herself yeah it's just the way they set it up sounded like oh you come down there you're gonna fucking die yeah so like I yeah. still I still agree with like Dr. Crusher that it's like d- I'm no I'm going but I, I don't think Worf was wrong to have concerns yeah yeah because I don't think he meant anything like malicious by it because we know that Worf respects women mm. well, well from what we've seen so far yeah okay good so point. most of the time yeah yeah there are there are points where they go back and forth on that one and it's a little awkward every well, time well in in recent episodes, he seems to be like, let's say, supportive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's true. The only one that that uh, Worf uh, is truly uh, truly against is the boy. <laughs> yeah, because he like because in the episode a few episodes ago with the kid, I don't remember what his name is. The kid was like, "Oh, you listen to women," and and um, Worf's like, "Yeah." <laughs> and the kid was specifically talking about like I think it was doc I think it was about Dr. C or something and was it Dr. C? I don't know. But regardless, I was like sure yeah. Was. I listen to women like what? So, anyways, they go down phasers are set to maximum stun. Oh, they all get in their fun like ready to fight poses to be transported <laughs> down. And they show this like exterior shot and I totally thought they were going to have them like beam down right there, but then they like don't. It's just like too long and then they cut to like inside the structures. <laughs> and they're already just like running around. I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, these are these are redresses of the Borg set apparently. Ah. Oh, yeah, they just, like, wander into an area where there's, like, people, and then, like, everybody's just walking by. It almost seems like they're ignoring them, but then all of a sudden, like, an alarm goes off, and everybody's like, ha, huh, we see you, and it's like, what? Uh, oh, yeah, there's, like, proximity detectors, uh, implant things that these people have. And they're color-coded for our convenience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we have, like, this guy who's like, come, follow me. Like, okay. And so then we learn that there are two factions the alliance who are the quote-unquote bad ones eh. and uh they have the crew people they're holding them hostage and then we have the coalition um who wants weapons eh. did you pick and up that this by... entire episode is an allegory to gang violence yet what yeah. it was <laughs> i would have never guessed uh <laughs> 
So, yeah, the coalition is like, don't worry, stick with us. We won't kill you or your people. (laughs) Uh, We're definitely the ones you want on your side. And if we help you, you got to give us like weapons and shit. It's like, yeah, seems seems legit. Oh, yeah. So they're like split up on like each side of the city. And I guess if they like pass a certain thing, their proximity detector things go off and like, I don't know, whatever. Oh, yeah. Their lead guy who I we don't find his name until like like a scene or two later. So I just called him haircut. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I was going to say this guy puts way too much effort into his hair considering he's like a fucking gang banger. He's just, uh, it's quite a look. And uh, the funny, the, the thing I did find funny is that when we do find out his name, it's not that far from haircut. It's Hain. <laughs> so, um, he kind of sucks, but he's like, yeah, listen, like, we just want peace. We got to keep the peace. And Dr. C's like, I think you're using, you don't know what that word means, yeah. maybe. Because <laughs> you're like, yeah. mm. he's really sleazy is what he is. You keep using that word, but I don't think you know what you it don't means. Think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they're like, okay, hey, we'll like, think about this of like getting your help to rescue the crew people. So like, uh, BRB. And then. Hain is like, hey, uh, Google the Enterprise and give me some shit on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But, okay, this is like a very minor thing. But the guy he tells to like look shit up about the Enterprise gives him like a really weird like nod, like a really intense look that just was like, oh, yeah, I will oh, look them up. That's because he wasn't allowed to have any dialogue because he's an extra. But he really <laughs> wanted to be noticed. So there we go. <laughs> well, I think it's the same guy who said, like, follow me or whatever. Oh, is it? In the, la- in the other scene. Yeah, I okay. think so. Fair enough. So then we video chat back with Hain. Oh, Haynes? Hain. Whatever. You know what? I'm going to call him Haircut. Sure. <laughs> so they video chat with Haircut, and he's like, hey, uh, did some did some research and shit, and uh, this is uh, Ashara Yar. Tasha, your sister. Whoa. Whoa. And this woman is, okay, number one, gorgeous. Like, what is the genetics in Yar's yeah. family? <laughs> They're just like a bunch of supermodels or something. Um, also, she looks, a, it took me a while to like figure out who she looked like. Linda Hamilton. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, she does. You're right. She does. She looks look a, a lot, lot like Linda Hamilton, and not just the haircut. It's like the face too. Well, her lips are much more pouty. Mm. I just and the general her face, but like, and not even like the haircut. Even though she's got like, the 80s. I mean, it's not the same. It's in the, 80s. the her haircut is yeah. the 80s. Yeah, it's terrible, and I hate it. But this woman is gorgeous, like ridiculously gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She's also... And they even put her in a cat suit to show us. Oh, yeah. They really needed us to know that outfit was wild. Um, But this first outfit she's in is the exact same as haircuts. Yes. She was like, do they all just have like a uniform? Because they seem to be the only one wearing this particular outfit, which was like a brown leather jacket, a white top, and like brown pants and... Yeah, it, it was interesting. Like, they're dressed exactly the same. Yeah. Anyways, they're like, um, Ashara will be your, the liaison, and she knows, like, Alliance territory, so she can help with the rescue plan. And then Picard, like, turns it off and then, like, turns to the group and goes, reactions? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, this guy is full of shit. Like, yeah. haircut is, like, lying and manipulating, and he is, like, sketchy as fuck. Everyone seems to forget that, though. Yeah, like, this yeah. episode gives us ample opportunity to realize that they are screwing with the Enterprise crew and still were kind of supposed to be surprised by the time that they screw with them. And it's like, why, guys? You, you've you given us multiple scenes that show that they are skeezy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then they're like, oh, maybe are they saying there's, like, a sister because... Uh, they did the Googling and learned that uh, Yar was from the planet. So, like, they're already suspicious. Yeah, second surprise sibling of the season. <laughs> oh, by the way, they did a DNA test. Yeah, it is Yar's sister. Ashara definitely has some baggage <laughs> regarding Yar's departure. Oh, you um, think? But we'll get to that a little later. Oh, yeah, so then, like, they... 
bring oh she makes like a face or something she's on the enterprise she makes like a face that like reminds data of yar and they go into the conference room and everybody's just sort of like awkwardly staring at them (laughs) it's really wild um and she's just like you don't think i'm her sister and then she's like you can sample my dna and dr c's like yes i will yeah so it turns out like 30 years ago shit went like badly on the planet and like then there was like a bunch of factions, but then like the coalition and alliance like were the strongest, so they're still going. And then like the government broke down and gave the coalition police powers. I don't know. Oh, also the alliance police powers. Why? Uh, oh, sure. Both let's... police powers? Yeah. Then what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't... Well, basically, yeah, why would you give right. both factions police powers if all they're going to do is like what they they're... basically what they're saying is that they turned over control to the gangs. And then the gangs eliminated. Well, that seems fucking stupid. Yeah. I think the moral of this episode is gangs bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was gangs were like a big worry in the 80s. And yeah, people literally thought that things were going to devolve into just gangs running the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, wild. So then. uh, Oh, apparently, like Tasha actually like asked ashara to like leave with her when she was like yeah i've had enough of this bullshit i'm fucking going and um ashara was like i just joined a gang kind of in it now so (laughs) thanks sorry babe i'm in it to win it yeah yeah um so then we get like a video call thing from tansu the engineer that they've like 20 hours i love it another uh, amount of time to count down that means nothing <laughs> 20 hours uh to get reparations i don't know i don't know what fucking that means in the context of this situation not the word i know what reparations means <laughs> well basically it's um, to pay or like pay up well they just say like ransom why do they say reparations that makes it sound like they did something like I don't I don't know. It just sounds like a feels like a weird word to use for this situation. Like in from their perspective, it's like you dared to come in like be here, so you have to repay us for the entry? Yeah. <laughs> also, Basically. this used to be a federation planet, if you recall. They don't yeah. really talk about it much here. Yeah, they said they they left But yeah. They, they mentioned that they left uh, like 15 years ago. Yeah or something so yeah they're like we'll be killed if you don't like do reparations whatever Mm -hmm. that is basically never discussed they're just like yeah we're gonna like rescue these people yeah we're not paying shit so like the alliance has like a bunch of like bases and they're all underground and heavily guarded blah 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 jordy's like oh if we can get to this like this my graphic scanner myographic scanner it's like a sensing device from the escape pod which monitors the bioelectric signatures of the crew in the event they get separated from the pod that's real convenient mm-hmm. so but Jordy, if he can get to the pod can make some adjustments to like boost the signal to the enterprise so put cards like yeah we don't even know where the escape pod is even though they didn't they say they literally say at the beginning of the episode they literally yeah. said they knew exactly where it was yeah they're like it's 300 meters outside of the fucking boundaries or whatever yep but okay i guess everybody fucking forgot that but then ashar is like oh it's level three c section five four is that a seven or a nine what did i write i think it's it a seven. really doesn't matter yeah so like she's now in oh wait She's, like, pointing out tunnel access routes and whatever. And this is really side note, but Worf looks huge standing behind her. He is. <laughs> just, like, like, I know he's really, like, tall, but, like, I, I, and I don't know how tall she is, but everybody just looks really small all of a sudden, and Worf just looks huge. It's fun. <laughs> it, there's nothing bad about it. Yeah. It just, like, it looks kind of jarring. Anyways, so Ashara's like, yeah, uh, put me in there, coach, as I can, like, give a distraction for Jordy to be able to do his shit. And Riker's like, that's too dangerous. And then Ashara's like, fuck it, I'm here to, like, get the job done. Mm-hmm. And so then, like, Dr. C takes Ashara's DNA, and she talks to Data, of like, oh, she's like, how, tell me how Yar died. And then Data refers, says, uh, was killed by a, uh, malevolent entity, which is an interesting way I mean, it's not wrong or anything. I just think that's an interesting way to describe it. That's a description of Armist that's accurate. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I just like, it's interesting. Okay, this is also another side note. They, this woman is so beautiful and they put her in like really nice minimal makeup. And then we had a close up of Dr. C and why do they like, why do they like pile that shit on her? Like they always get, they, I'd say 90% of the episodes we've seen, they've put so much makeup on Dr. C. Yeah, she has a lot. So we know. Especially blush. We, yeah. Uh, they, I don't understand why they do this because we know that they can do a natural look because the actress who plays Ashara looks incredible. Her makeup is done like softly. and But like, why do they do Dr. C so dirty I with no the makeup? I, I don't understand because Dr. C is beautiful. She does not need all this like intense lipstick and eyeshadow and blush. And it's not like, oh, it's the era because they fucking made Ashara look like saw like light makeup so like, i don't they're capable they just choose to like do her mm-hmm. this way i don't get it anyways so then like wharf uh riker and data and Jordy go go down to the colony um a sharp beams down separately the alarm goes off and she's just like looks like she's just like running around one room <laughs> just like weaving <laughs> in and out so they, like they're able to get to the pod and ashara goes to like a spot where like she can't be beamed out the signal is like interrupted by something or other i can't remember what it was and so riker's like uh data wharf stay with Jordy. and then wharf just like looks at riker like he's like but i want to come too <laughs> just like i know like wharf is team riker but like <laughs> wharf looked like really upset to be able to like being left behind with data and Jordy, even though he's not really being left behind anyways so a guy then like shoots ashara from like a freaking ladder i don't know and then she's on the ground and then like he goes i guess to like shoot her again or something and uh riker shows up and like shoots him and then like saves her they get back to the enterprise and everybody's already there so like they can fix her i don't know she's got like some broken ribs and she's okay and the dna confirms siblings and then I did like that. So then like Riker goes to talk to Picard and he does recognize that like Tasha did die under his command in like a fucking shitty way. And I was like, thought, are they just going to like forget like the, the original, like her scenario? But I like that they did touch on that. Yeah. That Riker like did acknowledge like it's not his fault, obviously, but it's just I like that they didn't forget that, you know, that what happened. Yeah. So, oh, oh, so then, like, Picard talks to Ashara, and he's, like, the first time I ever saw her was she was running through, like, this minefield to, like, save a wounded colonist, and he was, like, blown away at, like, her, like, bravery and that she always puts her safety, like, last. Mm -hmm. This is to speak everybody else is, like, good before, like, her safety is considered, which is, like, I wouldn't say not exactly what happened when she died. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was just sort of this guy was a piece of shit and just shot her. Yeah. She wasn't like. Well, I, I think what it was is that she was trying to. Because remember, uh, Deanna was stuck in the shuttlecraft. Yeah. And she was like, fuck this. I'm going to go get Deanna. And then he's like, then he just killed her. Yeah. Yeah. But she wasn't like doing like she didn't get anywhere with that so it yeah. wasn't like oh she was risking her help to save her her life to save troy but anyways she was trying i guess it, yeah the, the intentions were there yeah i mean a lot of people don't remember what happened by this point because they wouldn't have seen that episode in a long time so mm-hmm. like kind of looking back on it with like rose tinted glasses is not necessarily the worst thing they could have done yeah yeah anything i can do to like be like troy is uh, not troy i love troy but like yar is like incredible mm-hmm. yeah like i will support that um and so yeah picard's like she's amazing iconic and i her captain owed me a favor and i was like i would like her on the enterprise okay thanks bye mm-hmm. and yeah she's just so okay next scene is ashara is in a really intense blue jumpsuit yeah it is a look and a half <laughs> uh the first of star trek's blue jumpsuits mm-hmm. it is Star Trek loves to put people in skin tight, like spandex jumpsuits. Yes, especially attractive women. I mean, they also do it to the men, to be absolutely fair. Yeah. They do it a lot to the men. Yeah, but they really do it later to on. To the women? Yeah. It's I mean, a problem. They love their. 
Like, you think that, like, Starfleet would have some, like, other alternative extra clothes or something? Yeah, yeah I don't know if that was her choice or, <laughs> or the ship. They give her a selection there. What would you like? And the yeah. option is this job. <laughs> she chose it. Yeah, she got it from ship the, stores. I'm, oh, the shops. If she wanted something <laughs> different. <laughs> She's always in the, the white and beige or brown. She wanted to add some color to the, her wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> I mean, she looked incredible in this suit. Like, I don't, I think that woman probably would look amazing in anything. Yeah. She's like so beautiful. So then she. Oh, she's like exchange. She's like explaining stuff to Data about like locations of shit, and like Worf gives her a look, and I'm like, "What was this look? Like, I I don't know. Are they gonna fuck or something? Like, what was this <laughs> intense look they just like he gave her?" And then Ashara's like, "Data, where did it was Tasha's desk basically?" Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, a tactical def- desk where Worf is now." And then they all look at Worf again. And he looks at them, and I was like, "Why are they giving all these weird looks?" But now in retrospect, I think Worf kind of knew something was up, and maybe. Maybe that's why he was like Worf didn't trust her maybe oh yeah maybe because to me mm-hmm. Worf always feels like the most skeptical to like believe in people yeah like that he doesn't know right so like to me this that would feel like more on brand now like after seeing the ep- like it's done but at the time I was like why is he looking at her like that like yeah. what is this intensity I don't get it now I do I mean I'm speculating but mm-hmm. so then yeah, Data talk, talks to her more about um, Yar, and um, he's like, yeah, she was close with Riker and Worf and myself. And I was like, Yar was close with Riker? Like, since when? Yeah, she I don't wasn't. remember them ever hanging out. Like, Worf, yes, because I remember they played that game. And then Data, of course, for reasons we all know. And <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, turns out the crewmen are underground. They need, like, two hours to, like, drill a hole to get to these guys. Like, what? I don't. This is so fucking convoluted and ridiculous. So Ashara's like, yeah, like, I'll lead you guys, but I can't. Like, she's like, I wish I could lead you guys, but I can't because I've got an implant and I'll immediately set off alarms. And then Data's like, what if we remove it? And she's like, but there's an explosive. And he's like, oh, we can get around that. Yeah. So Shara gives Data a little bit of backstory that, like, her and Yar's parents were killed when right after she was born. And, like, some people took care of them until, like, they fell out didn't. I don't know. And it was, like, a bummer. And... She gets more, like, Yar gets more backstory uh, told to us in this episode than we got in the entire first season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, Yar just wanted to get the fuck out of there and ashara like says that she thought it was like weakness uh, that yar left but no she fucking made a name for herself she did shit and like you know she she did a lot and yar yar tasha yar is great yeah <laughs> it's definitely realistic though a lot of times like when someone gets out of a bad situation there is some resentment from the people left behind yeah yeah oh, very for much sure so. yeah and then for, like, a, a moment, it seems like Ashara is, like, seriously contemplating if, like, she made the right decision to stay. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, Data, I do consider you a friend. And then she's like, okay, I'm willing to have the implant removed. She's also like, maybe I'll leave the colony and apply to the Academy and join Starfleet. She doesn't really say this. Data tells Picard on behalf of her, which I feel like it'd be more effective if, like, she said it. But yeah. I don't know. I guess Data's the messenger. That's the moment where I felt like... That should have been a big clue because I feel like the like her wanting to leave the colony is like, okay, fair. But then it's like, but I also want to join Starfleet. I'm like, ah, uh, that's a bit too far. I don't. Okay, but didn't they yeah. also have the she have the secret meeting in the dark room with uh with, with haircut where she was like everything's going according to plan and it's like I don't yeah, think that was yet. That after, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That- yeah, that wasn't yet. I so. think the point moment... is, this episode is going out of its way to make us know that these characters are not trustworthy in any way whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're friends with Haircut, like, I do not trust. Like, red that, flag. Yeah. yeah, fair point. Haircut is the biggest red flag. So, yeah, she there's all that. And then he's like, Troy. And she's like, yeah, I get ambiguity from her. Her loyalties are divided. And then... I wrote Tasha in my notes, but I'm going to try to Nara. Ashara. Oh Troy's, Troy's really not good at her job in this episode. I mean, she does say that she gets, like, ambiguity, but I guess that's, like, still guys kind of wrong. Well, maybe, 
well i guess if her plan the whole time was to like fuck around and and like and find bullshit out. this yeah then yeah. i guess yeah troy is wrong but yeah i don't know it seems to me that troy should have like should have pushed more being like uh i think you guys are like you know trusting her a little too easily yeah uh but it, it seems like she didn't want to say anything yeah so then Anara does a, she's like, I have to tell hey, I have to tell Haircut that she's leaving, that like I'm leaving. So she does a video chat and she's like, it's working. And I was like, gasp, who saw that coming? What? Mm. So then Dr. C removes the implant. And uh, so now she can like lead the away team. So they start drilling and it takes five seconds for this drilling to happen. And then they like bring the crew down into the base I don't know. They're, like, talking really loudly for, like, people that are supposed to be, like, sneaking around. Yeah. Uh. Seriously. They, oh, they, like, find the door. Riker phasers the guard. And then they, Worf and Riker phaser the door. They get it open. They find the people. And then, like, Ashara kind of pieces out and starts, like, phasering her way <laughs> through the building. <laughs> and then Worf gets the crew men out. And then Data finds Ashara and, like, gasp, yeah, she doesn't care about the crewmen. She's got her own shit to do, her own mission. And there's 3,000 troops from the Coalition at the perimeter, like, ready to, like, destroy. And if she succeeds, uh, the Federation is, like, technically an accomplice to, like, yeah. Alliance death. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> lol, I guess. <laughs> also, the Federation, or sorry, also the Enterprise didn't notice any of this happening at all. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't notice 3,000 people moving around. (laughs) Okay. So then Ashara's like, listen, Data, I don't really want to kill you, but I will if necessary. And then Data experiences, uh, I wrote it, it's Data unlocks betrayal. (laughs) 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 Oh, Data. And so then like Riker fortunately shows up in time and Ashara tries to shoot Data misses, tries to shoot Riker, misses, and then Riker sets, then shoots her. But he's his phaser set to stun. Hers was set to kill. So she truly. But did she miss on purpose? Ooh. Um, probably not because she was like pretty like into accomplishing her shit. Yeah. So I think she missed by accident. (laughs) So then haircut. Oh, they video chat and like Riker is fucking pissed. And Picard is like, yeah, like, I guess we'll give her back. But like, we don't give a shit about haircut. And haircut like keeps talking and Picard's like, fucking end it. Like, shut the fuck up. Goodbye. And just like cuts him off. (laughs) And so they're like, yeah, we were all like really quick to believe in Ashara because like they hoped she'd be like Troy. And they were disappointed. Like Tasha? You said you. Yeah. God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) There's too many names. Uh, well Yar is correct because yeah. that's the last name so yes. yeah so yeah they thought she'd be like Yar they were wrong they are bummed Ashara tells Data that she wasn't always lying and Data and Data's just like bye energize mm-hmm. goodbye and then we get like one little scene at the end which was nice it was Data tells Riker that like it's been days but he's still thinking about Ashara and Riker's like oh yeah so like that's what happens when you like trust people or whatever but like so data's like oh so we should like not trust people and Riker's like no trust people because that's how you get like closeness relationships etc and like that had you it's better and it's like a risk that he's will take every single time and then data's like hmm okay and then he has the little like ashara's implant which is like at this point data get rid of that shit she's like was ready to kill you yeah this is it's not the sentimental thing that i think i think it was the aspect of trying to give yar uh uh, like tasha a more proper goodbye using this but like she already had a proper goodbye i think oh yeah in a much better episode yes um yeah that that being said i don't like this character she is um she's a really generic like tough woman who's a little vulnerable that sort of thing and i just i don't buy it i don't know why there's just something about the character just is not convincing to me and i'm not i i don't know if i can really put my finger on it 
for me, it's because she she like appears that to change her mind so quick, her opinion so quickly on shit. Mm -hmm. So like she's given the tiniest bit more information and then she's like, oh, I mean, we know it's kind of like an act at this point. Yeah. But like when they're like, Yar, Yar did all this. And she's like, oh, maybe I was wrong. Like Yar did this. Oh, maybe I was wrong. We did this. Oh, maybe, maybe I should be thinking of it this way. But then in the end, it's like all fucking like it feels they did a weird job of writing this character because it's weirdly performative in like a way that doesn't, like make sense in a way yeah yeah because i think you're like, right about why? that why we don't know this person enough and now we have this like she's making all these dramatic decisions and changes in her life because of like a couple of conversations with data and we're supposed to and they're supposed to be like oh yeah seems legit she's like changing everything she knew to after like a conversation with data about her sister who she hadn't seen in like 15 years yeah i mean i i think i think that's kind of the point though is that you're supposed to see like how easily they're being manipulated just because they really miss tasha but it feels like they should know better like it's, like nobody recognized that this was like sketchy even though like they knew that haircut was manipulating them and lying and and troy said that like ashara was like had dual like had questionable loyalties and stuff but Mm -hmm. everybody was like meh we're just gonna be blind to like what's in front of us and well i think i think that's the point is that like uh, this should have been obvious to you but it wasn't because you were blinded by you know that she's tasha's sister but I don't th- I here here's the thing. I don't I don't I don't think they pulled it off, but I think that's what they were going for. Oh, okay, fair point. Yeah, like I can get that, but I do think like for someone like Picard or whatever, like this just felt like such an oversight of just like mm-hmm. you guys just you because you cuz he also f- calls out Riker for like being emotional yep. and then fucking has the same like turns around yeah. and is like, "Well, this is my thoughts for Yar and this is what we could like like, he doesn't suspect her being sketchy. Picard is weirdly, like, uninvolved in this episode. Yeah. It's, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, I noticed that. It's like, you'd think he'd have, like, more involvement in this mission. It's pretty important. Yeah. It just feels really, like, wishy-washy on his part in this. Because he, like, shows up to basically contribute nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's the fucking captain. Yep. And he's someone whose, like, judgment matters, I don't want to say the most, but, like. It matters a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It matters a good deal. And he kind of just like, it's like, meh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Meh. And it's kind of disappointing. It just feels sloppy in a way. Yeah. The episode is like frustratingly obvious about what it's trying to do with itself in on multiple occasions. Like the 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 secret backroom conversation uh, is one of them. But like, even when you, when they first beam down to the planet, one of the first things that we see is like a blinking neon sign. You're like, okay, we get it. It's like a CD alley or some shit. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and it like the, the entire episode seems to ooze that. And I'm wondering how much of that is the writing and how much of it is actually the director's choices. I don't know. Yeah. Cause like, you know dark back room sort of thing that they could have done anywhere on any like place on the ship but it was actively chosen to make it a dark room where you know everything's like hidden in shadow and whatnot um i'm sure that the the fucking blinking neon sign wasn't something that was on the uh or in the script but then all of the moments when um when ashara is like really obvious about the fact that she's being uh, manipulative to them are clearly written into the script so oh geez it's kind of like a double-edged sword of them both screwing up on this a little bit Mm -hmm. well not not necessarily screwing up but just dropping the ball yeah yeah um i think in the end um this episode's distinction is not the content of the episode it's that this is episode number 80 and therefore the first episode that surpassed the 79 episode mark that the original series had Mm. yes interesting yeah it's pretty much the episode's only distinction because i usually forget about it to be honest i'm like oh that one Ugh. yeah same here I actually didn't, like, when I was watching this episode, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, it's not bad. It just has no, like, 
substance afterwards that's all that important. Yeah. I do like showing, because I, I feel like this episode kind of, it's arguably a data episode. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. I kind of like showing that data can be emotionally manipulated. Yeah. It's just, it's an interesting thing to see that he, that he is complex enough that he can, you know, have someone toy with his quote unquote emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I just thought that was a very interesting thing. And it made me feel like really bad for data. (laughs) I think that's mm-hmm. um, I think that's kind of the idea. You're supposed to feel bad for him, especially yeah. with that discussion he has with Riker in the end. I thought that was a decent coda, but like the the content of it is good. But I'm not sure that their conversation really ends very well. No, it doesn't. But I, I did like that conversation where yeah, me too. Because the, the I mean, here's the thing. That's a thing a lot of us do. It's like. We're afraid of getting hurt, so we don't trust people. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. then, because we don't trust anyone, you know, we we end up very isolated mm-hmm. and alone, and we don't have a lot of connections. So it's like you kind of have to take that risk to have, you know, those connections in your life. And, like, every time you are... Relationships are, are trust. Yeah. You know, uh, in every different kind of relationship, there's some kind of trust there. You know, you're making yourself vulnerable in some way. You've got to take um, that risk, even if it means that the colony is going to be taken over by a gang. Oh, wait, that's right. That was our allegory yeah. in this episode. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd like... Uh, that's the thing. I like what they were going for, but yeah, they didn't really... They didn't, it off too well. No, they didn't land it. Um, the episode yeah. has... It's not the most horrible episode, it's but it's not. like... It's not. Eh. It's more missed opportunities, I think. Yeah. But, hey, you know what? Not every episode can be great. Uh, this episode does have the distinction of being the first one written by a writer named Joe Minoski. Uh, Joe Minoski remained with Star Trek until the end of Voyager, I believe, um, and mm-hmm. even wrote an episode of Discovery. Uh, many years later, obviously. Uh, he was responsible mm-hmm. for 16 episodes of TNG, including one of its most famous, which we'll get to later, four Ooh. bad episodes of DS9, and 36 episodes of Voyager, most of which are oh. <laughs> are kind of hit or miss like this one was. <laughs> mm. Interesting. All right, so I guess it's time to move on to favorite moments, lines, and things of that nature. Um, uh, I can already tell you mine right off the bat. You go first, because I'm not sure what mine are. Okay, okay. So uh, there were two, actually. One of them was the, it's working, in a dark room, and I'm just like, I'm in. Um, But but, no, honestly, the the one that really got me was, um, Tasha and I spent much time together. We had a number of conversations. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Data. <laughs> like, what a way to boil down your conversation, your entire relationship with someone. <laughs> well, it is Data. That's true. But, I mean, this is someone he did the sex with. Yeah. It was a drunken hookup, in fairness. Though. Yeah, but he has talked about it with fondness. True. That is true. <laughs> I also like that. I like that Data ascribes so much meaning to it. Although they were friends, so it was a little bit more meaningful. That's true. It's uh, They were friends, and they had benefits once. Mm-hmm. It's cute that Data is, like, so, like, he holds, like, the, even though he was under the influence, too, it, like, it still holds a lot of meaning for him. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I think I figured out my quote-unquote favorite bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the first scene where they were playing poker, and yes. then Riker does the card trick, and Data ruins it <laughs> yeah. i love star trek poker scenes honestly and i liked when uh what's it called they introduce uh ashara and then picard's like hold on and then like they shut down the screen and he just turns and goes reactions <laughs> 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 and uh yeah i guess that's it <laughs> not a lot womp womp mm-hmm. i don't i don't 
really have anything that's that stands out to be honest i i kind of like the conversation at the end with Riker and, and data and yeah the poker scene is is fun maggie just come out and being honest like, your favorite scene is anything that involves a shara and a cat suit we get it it's fine it's fair to say that I mean, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> she is f- she is fucking beautiful. She is? Like seriously. Holy shit. Yeah. And I even like I even like the terrible mullet. Yeah, I kind of uh, do too to be honest, but that that's a choice yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think she pulls it off. And also they're like kind of coming back a little bit. That's true, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of it <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so I suppose with that, let's get on to predictions for the next episode. Cool. So, the next episode, Dory, is called Reunion. Mm -hmm. And it's a Worf episode. (gasps) (laughs) 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 Yay! So, we get a visit from Worf's past, (gasps) and we deal with more Klingon politics. Oh, okay. Oh, (gasps) wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is, would this be someone we've met before? No, don't tell me. Wait, tell me. No, don't tell me. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay, wait, I'll give you a clue. It's from Worf's past. Uh, Oh, from his past. Oh, I thought you guys meant from his past. Okay, now now it's clear. Okay. Okay, Klingon politics though. God, they're so confusing they're so klingon uh i'll give you the hint that it has to do with the leadership of the council <gasps> oh because that guy was sketchy as fuck also old mm-hmm. and weird oh. okay 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 so what if that guy dies and mm-hmm. now it there's like a power grab um because that guy was he was corrupt i think and because he knew the real truth about like Worf's dad, but like was like, ah, oh, they're more influential, so we can't fucking tell the truth, whatever. So maybe there's like, so this guy dies, so now there needs to be a new person in power. And the there's like the shitty side with that guy who was like bad, whose dad was really the real villain. Uh, and Dura. maybe there's somebody. Yeah, sure Dude, uh, I don't remember anybody's names <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there's like a new person coming in who's like listen Worf I know your situation I believe in you and I think you should be like you should be on this side maybe the person from Worf's past is the one who's like a gunning to be the new leader mm-hmm. that would be cool 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 and they're like wharf if you like you gotta help me and then because like i can get you like back into the klingon i can get you xx communicated incommunicated (laughs) oh next communicated i don't know (laughs) Uh, i can get you back in yeah and wharf is like unsure if he should get involved (gasps) yes that's what i'm going with all right cool uh so if you'd like to see if that's correct Watch along with us and Wait, join us. Wait, sorry. For I just what? what if Worf is the one that they're like, Worf, you should be the one running. <gasps> Vote for Worf. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, watch along with us and join us for the next episode of Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. Goodbye. <laughs>